Hello and welcome to the NSC5 training with me, Ryan. In this next section, we're going to go through the device manager and this will be spread out over the next couple of videos. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, on LinkedIn or Twitter. Let's have a look where we are on the plan. We started with 40 manager introduction, discussing ADOMS and how it's a centralized place to manage multiple Fortinet devices and why a business may want to actually deploy it. We then jumped into the system settings, understanding how to configure the basic network settings, backing up and restoring, work groups and workflows, and then some key elements around the different types of ways you can deploy Forty Manager, whether that's a VM or physical, and how you would access and set up the device from scratch. Now where we are now is the device manager and in the device manager section we're going to start off by having a discussion around what is the device manager, what it can do for you and how we can utilize it to import, export and install new devices. So what is device manager? Device manager is a tab within the 40 manager itself that allows us to manage devices. Now the device itself we need to think about what sort of device level settings we need to manage here. So an example would be SNMP, DNS, those sort of device level settings. What you won't find here is things like your policies and security profiles. There will be in a different section called the policy and objects and we'll get to that in our next section after the device manager. Now the device manager as it says here, we can add a device into the 40 manager, which is what we're going to do on this video, and we can configure the settings on the managed device, like previously stated, SNMP, DNS, interface, etc. So what you're going to find here, interface name, device synchronization, so making sure that the 40 manager and the device, maybe a 40 gate, is synced up and in line with one another. We can see revision history, so if someone's made a change and we want to revert that change or compare it with a previous change, we can go ahead and do that within the device manager. And provisioning templates, so if we have multiple devices that are all going to have the same device level settings, then we can create a provision template and when we install those devices or devices that are already installed, we can push out these templates. So what can you do? Touch on these already. So we can add a device, modify a device. Again, it's only the device level settings, no policies. We can install the configuration onto the device. We can revert configurations. We can get into the device via Telnet and SSH. We can update the firmware. We can schedule it. We can look at the HA status and much more. So what we're going to do is have a discussion around how we would add some devices into it. And then we're going to get in and actually add the device. So there are two main methods. There are using the device uh, wizard itself, and within that wizard there are two subsections called the discover, which allows you to pop in an IP address and go off and query that device and bring back the information required to import the device into the device manager. Or we have the second option within the device wizard called the add model device, and this allows you to essentially preempt adding a device. So if a device is not yet live or maybe you have a large rollout and you want to add those devices prior to them being able to be discovered, then you can add it in here. Or second, you can get the device itself to request access to the 40 manager and then the admin on the 40 manager can accept or decline that request. Okay, let's jump in and make some changes. Before we jump into the 40 manager, what we're going to need to do is log into our 40 gate and ensure that the 40 gate is listening to the right protocols. So let's log in with the credentials. And from here, under the systems tab, go to network interfaces. Now the interface that we're interested in is actually port one. And you can see at the moment within port one, it's listening for ping, HTTPS, SSH, HTTP and telnet. So we click edit this, we can ask it to listen to other administrative access and the one that we're interested in is actually the 40 manager access. We now press OK on this, the 40 gate now is ready to receive a request from the 40 manager. So in order to do that we're going to flip over to the actual 40 manager and within the 40 manager itself we're going to select the add device. 
Now here are the two subsections within the add device. We have the discover and we have the add model. Now since we know the device itself is live, we're going to go down the discover route to begin with. So we're going to type in the actual IP address that we initially put allowed the 40 manager access in and type in the credentials for the device. Now what would happen is it would go off and discover that device and bring back the information that's required for the 40 manager to import. Now it's able to find the device on the IP that we've given it. It's able to look at the model, the firmware and the serial and by default it's going to import all of the device policy and objects for us which in this case is what we want to do. It's going to hit next. It's going to ask for a name. Let's give it a name. We're going to say it's the London site. We can give it a description. We can also select whether we want the 40 AP and 40 client to be managed on the device itself, meaning if we have multiple devices in 40 Manager and you wanted to change the maybe SSID, for example, of the uh, device, you'd have to log in to the device um, through the 40 Manager. Well, not so much login, but essentially there'd be a list of devices and you would have to go into that device and actually go into the AP section, create the changes, and then install it downstream into the device. Same with the 40 client, or alternatively, you can click the centralize or central option. This allows you to create a new tab or automatically creates a new tab under the device manager that allows you to create on a global scale sort of changes to all of your access points as an example. We can type in other information about the device. In this case, we're going to leave it blank. Okay, so it's going to go off now and discover the device and pull back the objects, the database, the signature information, the firmware, amongst other things. Once it's happy and it's pulled back the device, we can continue with the wizard. Now the next section will be the system templates. And you can see just on the left here, the list of questions or steps it's going to essentially ask us in order to successfully put this device inside the 40 manager. Now the templates, the next section is around if we wanted to centralize some of the device settings. So I mentioned previously that within the, well you can see it down here, the provisioning template section, there's a, an opportunity to make device templates. And if we were to make those device templates, they would actually appear here. So for example, we could have a branch template or a HQ template, and depending on those templates might change the SNMP string, might change the login settings, might change the DNS, and so forth. But for now, we're just going to use the default settings. Now when I hit next, the first thing you'll notice is it skips the VDOM section. And the reason it skips the VDOM section is because our actual 40 gate device itself doesn't have any VDOMs configured. So it's clever enough to know not to actually go into that section. Now, if there were VDOMs configured, we can essentially put each individual VDOM into its own individual ADOM. Now, if we were to go down that route and put a VDOM inside an ADOM, each VDOM will consume one license on the 40 manager. So if your 40 manager had licensed of 100 devices and you had two 40 gates with 50 VDOMs each on it, each VDOM having to have its own ADOM, then you would consume your 40 manager license. Now on the interface map, you can see that it's actually pulled back all the interfaces, kind of 1 to 10. And it's asked on the side here what we want those interfaces to be called. Now, for example, if port 1 was the WAN, we could rename this to the WAN interface. And in the 40 manager, it would show up as the WAN interface, but the 40 gate itself would know, or the 40 manager itself would then install it against port 1. So it creates that dynamic mapping, essentially, between those interfaces. When we pop next, it's going to jump into the policy. So where do we want the policy to be stored? Do we want to import all the policies, or maybe we want selected policy IDs? In this case, I'm going to import all the policies. It's going to ask us, what do we want the policy package to be called? Well, in this case, I'm going to keep it as London site. 
And within the policies, there's obviously objects that make those policies work. And it's asking us, do we want to import the policies that are only critical to the objects, or do we want to import all policies regardless of whether they're against, sorry, import all objects regardless of whether they're against a particular policy. In this case, I'm going to leave it all as default and press next. It will now look for the objects themselves and pull it back and tell us if it's found any duplicates. In this case, it has found duplicates because I've previously installed the device. So we're just going to hit next on that and we're going to allow it to just import over what was currently there. Now once the actual uh, device has been installed, it gives a nice summary and we can also download a report. And if we were to open this report, it would tell us essentially what it's gone ahead and done. And it's important that you download this report as best practice in a production network because I'm pretty sure, but could be mistaken, that this is the only place that this report can actually be downloaded. So once you finish and press finished, it will come up and the device is now installed under the device manager and you can see it's put it under the all 40 gates device group on the left there. If we go to add the device again, but in this case select the add model device, this would be the way of adding a device that's not currently yet live. So maybe we're sort of preempting the device being plugged in by a remote engineer. And in order to, to actually preempt that, we need some information about the device that's normally found during the discovery method. So SN, serial number, we would want to know what name to actually call the device in the list. The firmware, now this is important because when the 40 manager installs devices or de installs your changes to the device downstream, it needs to know that it has the right syntax and selecting the correct firmware version will change that syntax accordingly. And again, we can create additional information about it like where it's located and who to contact if there's an issue with this device. Okay, lastly, we're going to go into a FortiGate itself and ask the FortiGate to request access to the Forti Manager. And the way we go about doing this is going from the System, Admin, and then Settings. And underneath the Central Management, we select Forti Manager, put the IP of the Forti Manager in, and send it a request. Once that request has been sent, we'll get a confirmation that it's waiting for the administrator at the other end to approve and then we're going to get logged out of the Forti gate. If we were to log back in, we'll have a warning advising us that this Forti gate believes it's going to be managed by a Forti manager. And because of that, by default, the Forti manager is actually going to put it inside a root level ADOM because we've not configured any ADOMs. And because of that, it's going to be the normal ADOM. Now, I've spoken previously on another video around the differences between normal ADOMs and backup ADOMs. Now the normal ADOM, which is kind of what this is going to be falling into, uh, focuses on that top-down approach, meaning the configuration changes are made on the 40 manager and then installed downstream into the 40 gate. And a backup ADOM is the bottom-up approach, meaning the configurations are done on the 40 gate and then synced and imported back in to the 40 manager. And there are I'll put a link in the description back to those videos for further information on those ADOM types. But for now, what we should be doing here is either logging in as a read-only to actually look at the settings within the uh, 48 itself. We shouldn't be making any write changes in here. If we did write or make or modify any changes inside the 48, it would it would unsync it with the 40 manager and cause problems. So because this 48 now thinks it's part of a 40 manager, our next task is to go in and accept this device within the 40 manager so we can start configuring the device correctly. Now in the 40 manager itself, you'll notice at the top left under devices and groups, it comes up as an unregistered device. Here's our device. We can see the IP, the firmware, the serial number and so forth. We can either delete this request or we can click add and we can type in the credentials of the device change the device name, click OK, and it will actually pull that device into the 40 manager. So we're going to wait for that to finish.
obviously the loading into the database and the registration of the device will have many factors both the time it takes to connect to the device and sync its configuration across so something like bandwidth and latency will play a part in that and also the time it takes for the 40 manager itself to actually encode the information that's required inside the particular actual ADOM if there is an ADOM. In this case there is no ADOMs that's why we don't have that drop down up here so therefore it's just falling it directly into this device into this or FortiGates device section and you can see here's the actual FortiGates device itself and then we can go up here to the menu and select the settings that we wish to change at the device level for this particular device. Okay moving on there are around four main wizards within the uh, Forti Manager device manager section. First one is the add a device we've gone through this it allows us to add a device into the Forti Manager that's both the device level and policy level. We also have the install. This is something we haven't looked at yet, but we'll do in the up and coming videos. This wizard, uh, wizard allows us to install both uh, policies, objects, and device level settings onto the actual device itself. And it also allows us at this point with the workflows and work groups, whether we want to allow or uh, reject and modify the actual settings themselves. And there is a video that I've done on workspaces and workflows, which I'll link in the description. There is also the import policy. Import policy allows us to essentially grab the policy from the device and put it back into the Forti Manager. So if a, if a change was made on the device and we need to sync that back up, we would actually import it back into the Forti Manager. And we also have the reinstall policy. So this is used to quickly install the policy we have on the Forti Manager downstream into the device. Now I've put here in brackets not recommended. Now the reason I put that there is because most production environments won't actually use the uh, quick store in policy, not on production equipment, because they actually use the wizard. And the reason they use the wizard to push the devices, the actual config down, is not only can they preview the changes to ensure that the Forti Manager is actually making the changes that it actually needs to to do rather than maybe make some changes that it's unexpectedly going to do but it also gives them the ability to maybe put a change control reference or some kind of sort of reference to allow other engineers and other people to preview and understand why that install or change was made onto the device rather than just blindly clicking and installing the policy to give you some sort of visual of what this looks like We've already logged into it, but to give you an idea, within the device manager, we have the add device wizard at the top and the install wizard. And then to access the reinstall policy and the import policy, you would right click on the device itself. Now, something to keep in mind that helps me with these imports and exports and, and so forth is install. When we talk about installing something, we talk about actually putting something from the Forti Manager onto the device. So we're installing it onto the device. When we're thinking about importing, we're importing something into the Forti Manager, meaning we're actually taking the configuration or policies of the device itself, whether that's a Forti Gate or another device, and putting it inside the Forti Manager. Okay, so wrapping up the lesson then, what have we learned? We had a look over the device manager, what it can do and what can it do. So we know that device le the device manager allows us to make device level changes, not object or policy related changes. We went into adding a device, we used the discovery mode to begin with to discover the device that's already live. We then had a brief discussion around the add model device which allows you to add a device which isn't live into in order to preempt it. We then had a look into getting onto a FortiGate and requesting the FortiGate to be added to the Forti Manager and then going into the Forti Manager and adding it. And then we finished up with a quick overview on the different wizards that are available to us within the device manager. Hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing. And if it has been, please do like and subscribe.